the flood churned up all this stuff and redeposit. But where is the data? Where is the data? Datum that supp that supports this differential sorting of minerals. Yeah, where's the baseline for this whole thing? What uh, upon what was this great churning right accomplished? Uh, right here, the original uh, creation. Um, those originally, of course, were horizontal, and they were on top of this stuff. Here and in many other places, they have been scraped away. We have been able to see them elsewhere. They're sort of tilted. And, but the great unconformity comes in waves. You know, where do they define the these? Where is their zero? Where is their zero? This is zero. This is the created uh, world. Now, they will argue that there's no place on the planet where you can see the entire um, uninterrupted geological column. And, you know, that's Which is true. So yeah, what? And, and so what? Now, we, we might not be able to get the whole shoot and match of one whole big sequence, but we got a hell of a lot of it down here, and there's other parts of the world where we can pick up the pieces that are missing. For example, here we don't have these missing strata, but we do have those missing strata elsewhere. So we In know that those strata were oh. laid down over the basement rocks before the Tapeach <laughs> was laid down. I mean, that's what geologists do. You know? I mean, these guys do a hell of a lot of work mapping okay, the strata very, you know, it, it's an awful lot of work to map all of this uh, planet of the Earth of ours. But and that geological, that thing there, if we were to follow it all across the planet, would be the zeroth. Except you can't follow it all around the planet. You can follow it regionally uh -huh. across the Colorado Plateau. Are there, there are other places where There are other exposed? places where you have, I mean, you go up to Canada, right, you've got rocks of similar, actually rocks well older than this, that are exposed right at the surface. That's a great unconformity. So it's between now and 3.4 billion years ago, type of thing. Um, they, to my knowledge, creationists have never tried to argue I mean, it's so hard because, again, I, the thing I keep trying to come back to with them is that there is no internal consistency to their model from place to place. You can't take their model and take it someplace else and use the exact same explanation and have it work. Um, to some degree, they get away, they, they, they try to explain the way the fact that they're looking at one event globally and geologists are saying, that well, this spot's different than this spot and this spot, and we expect to see different sediment packs some places where the land some places. We don't have the need for an entire globe covered by water simultaneously, um, which they do. And, and that's, in fact, there's yeah. a lot of observations that don't work at all. For yeah. Them. Remember when we passed uh, through the faults? Remember, uh, I'm sure your boatman pointed out the faults too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, creationists have to explain those as well. And their argument is that when those faults occurred, the strata were all wet. Because, um, of course, remember the whole time span of the, of the planet is only in thousands of years rather than billions. And so all of this stuff was laid down, it was still soggy, and the faults occurred. And they believe that, that this sort of catastrophic faulting of wet strata is much more believable than the kind of argument from standard geology. That they are hard strata, which just gradually b were bent over incredibly long, long periods of time. That part of it, that's not even the geological explanation. It's not they're bent over long periods of time. It's just that they're under enough overburden pressure that when the fault does reactivate and only slips 20 or 30 or 50 feet, the rock is able to deform rather than break. That's because 